in, in this video, we're going to talk about um, discrete time uh, Fourier transform. So we actually to be to be complete, we should probably put the word discrete time here. Earlier, we talked about continuous time uh, Fourier transform. And if you recall, uh, Fourier transform is an extension, in a sense, of a Fourier series uh, that has, allows us to deal with uh, signals that are non-periodic or aperiodic. So let's go ahead and start with an example. Let's say, let's say I have a signal, and my signal with the axis n, um, and the signal, let's say, at 0, with some value, some other value, and on and on. And maybe stops at a certain location at n2 let's say and the rest of the values are zero and then maybe just goes back down to some other value n1 might be a negative number doesn't matter or positive number and the rest are zero so you got a signal looking like this this, uh, this is your x of n has a finite period from n1 to a uh, finite duration from n1 to n2 and so you know I know my Fourier series equation, so maybe I can use that to approximate it. If you remember, your Fourier series for discrete time says that this is equal to the summation of k equal to, uh, over a period, um, a of k e to the j k omega 0 n. Now, the only issue you have is this is not periodic. It's an aperiodic signal. So what would, would you consider the period? And much like we did on the continuous time, we're just going to say, look, let's assume n is equal to n2 minus n1. So what we're basically saying, let's assume this is the period. Okay? And that's a period n. Um, to be exact, that will be plus 1. But that's not important. So let's assume the period is from n1 to n2. And you say, okay, if that is the period, then what do I do with the places that is zero in this direction and this direction? We basically assume it repeats itself. Since we're not going to pay attention to that part, we can get away with this. So that's great. Um, so, so, okay, so we've got this kind of a pl placeholder for period and all of that. So the next step would be, um, how do I find uh, A of K? Uh, if I have a signal that looks like that. And if you recall, A of K equation was 1 over N, summation of N over a period of N. Remember, this is a Fourier series. They were both periodic. And I'll put my X of N, whatever X of N I was given, times E to the minus J K omega 0 N. So, so, so we look at that thing, but then... Um, so what happens, what happens if I were to um, do a couple of things? One, um, since, since this, um, these are all zeros, when I do a summation, all the places that are zero goes away. So I could say, instead of saying n is equal to that, let's go ahead and let the n goes to infinity. So I'm going to go from minus infinity to infinity as my period. And I'm going to say, my fundamental frequency, I'm going to put it really, really small, almost nearing zero uh, to make sure I cover all of it. So if that is the case, then then I could, so, so actually that goes by definition. I should say we would make it that way because if n is going to infinity, omega zero is two pi over n, which means by definition it's going to go, be going to zero. So, so if you have those two assumptions, how does a of k change? in light of those two changes we made. So that basically says, okay, my A of K is going to become equal to, um, to 1 over N. And my summation now, since my N goes from to infinity, so it's going to be from minus infinity to infinity. So my N goes from minus infinity to infinity. X of N e to the minus j k omega 0 n okay one of the other thing we say we basically can come here and make an assumption that omega is just a variable for now and omega is equal to k omega 0 okay and if you make that assumption this this equation gets reduced to a of k is equal to 1 over n summation of n going from minus infinity to infinity x of n 
e to the j k omega uh, with a minus in front of it. Okay. So at this point, um, we we take a look and we can make it much like we did in the time domain with a continuous time domain. We can say this piece we're going to refer to it as x of e to the j omega and in discrete instead of saying j omega they do that and the reason for that is eventually they will call this z and we can leverage it to do some other stuff in the future but e to the j omega for discrete we always represent the Fourier transform by e to the j omega and this is basically a Fourier transform of x of n so far so good and that means that what we are basically saying is that Fourier transform x of j omega is a summation of n going from minus infinity to infinity, x of n e to the minus j k omega. And we have a name for this thing, so it's good to get a name for these. This is referred to as the Fourier transform equation. And, or sometimes referred to as the analysis equation. Because this equation shows us all the frequency spectrum of x of, x of, uh, uh, x of n. So it will tell us what it looks like in the frequency domain. So if we use the above relationship, we can basically at this point say a of k is equal to 1 over n x of e um, to the j k omega uh, i'm sorry there's no k in here so i suppose we can we can say it that way too it's a little different but most of the time we just say it's one over n remember we had we made an assumption that k omega zero is equal to omega so so many most of the time we, once we get comfortable with this we'll write it as just x of j omega okay so that's uh, that's uh, that's we're done at that point. Now, how about so if I if I have the Fourier transform, the next job is to Fourier find the Fourier inverse transform. In other words, if I were to have x of e to the j omega, which is the Fourier transform of x, of, can I find x of n? And what we're going to do, we're going to go back and rely again on the x of n equation, which we had for Fourier series, which was summation of k um, k over a period of a of k e to the j k omega zero n so that's basically the Fourier series equation and now that we have this relationship so we can kind of take this and plug it in here and then the uh, summation will end up looking like one over n summation of k going from n uh, for, for over a period, x of e to the j omega, e to the j k omega zero n. Okay. Now remember, uh, we know that n is a period. At least that's what we assume, which is means it's equal to two pi over omega zero. Another way to do this is basically we can put that in the equation and at this point our x of n then becomes equal to 1 over n summation of k over a period and then x of e to the j omega and then e to the j k omega 0 n um, let's let's go back and, and then I can literally replace this is n with 2 pi over omega 0 and I'm going to put the omega 0 here instead of putting it under here okay now I have a reason for doing it it's kind of moving forward as you remember n in, in the Fourier transfer since is not periodic we assume n goes to infinite so you will calculate it from minus n which means omega 0 is approaching 0 and this is what we're doing. We're basically now saying this summation is getting the, the intervals of summation, the k. The k is going from minus infinity to infinity. So there are lots of k's, then omega is small. And at the limit, this summation turns into integrals, which basically says x of n has actually 
equal to 1 over 2 pi integral. And remember, the integral for, for this one is going to go um, over a period, um, which, um, which for uh, this case, Uh, so the, the period for this thing is basically n. Well, I'll just carry it down here for now. So we're going to integrate it over a period n. And, um, <clears throat> and then x of e to the j omega, e to the j omega n. And this, this omega 0 is basically is going to be each k plus 1 n minus k n so it's really small as as n uh, moves forward and this this interval is the dw so we just write it as dw all right so now we have this the only thing we got to decide is what is the period if you look at this signal you notice that the period for this signal now is 2 pi every 2 pi it repeats itself so now we are finally arriving at our inverse Fourier transform equation, which is going to be 1 over 2 pi integral of um, 2 pi x of e, the Fourier transform of x, e to the j omega n d omega. And again, this is referred to as the inverse Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform, uh, also called synthesis, because we are using that to build a signal. So synthesis means build, so synthesis equation, uh, as opposed to the analysis equation. So um, at this point, we have been able to derive both sides of the equation, so yeah, both sides of the transform. So let me make this a little bigger so we can see it. So we know if you give me an x of n, I'm able to give you x of e to the j omega, which basically says I can take x of n would be, if you give me a signal in time, I will be able to give you a signal in omega. And furthermore, and I know that the period of this thing is going to go from 0 to 2 pi in omega, and it's going to be repeating itself uh, over and over again. So this doesn't, this, this, this not periodic, doesn't have to be periodic, but this will be periodic. If it's not periodic, that would be periodic. And the other thing too, interesting to think about is that in this, this, this is in, this is in discrete time. So it's discrete over here. It's continuous in frequency. So a few things for you to uh, consider as you think about this. Okay, so let's 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 put this in use. Let's say somebody gives us um, let's let's make up a problem and uh, try to see if we can find a Fourier transform of it. Let's say somebody gives us a signal, and this signal let's say it's um, it's got values at let's say minus three minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's say it's got a value of 2 here. It's got a value of 7 here. It's got a value of 2. Just, just ran, more or less randomly picking a value just to demonstrate a concept. 5, and then let's say this is 6. So this is our x of n given to us, and they want to know what the frequency profile of this particular signal looks like. And so we say, okay, we got the tool right here. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that would be if I had x of j omega. Here is my frequency. So all I need to do is find uh, find a Fourier transform of x of n. And uh, as you notice, we use the f much like the time domain. So that's, and we refer to it as e to the j omega in this field. And then, by the way, if you shorthand for this, if I haven't mentioned the shorthand for this piece is Z. So Z is E shorthand for E to the J omega. Remember, S in the other part in the continuous domain was J omega. That was the shorthand there. This is the shorthand here. 
And um, so e to the j omega, therefore that would be summation. I'm just going to plug it in that summation n is equal to minus infinity to infinity. Oh, uh, yeah, infinity x of n e to the minus j omega n. So when I look at this thing, I say, okay, I really have to only worry about minus 3 to 2. The rest of them are 0. So it's going to be basically x of minus 3 times e to the plus 3 or j 3 omega. That's one piece, plus x of, let's make it smaller so they all fit, x of minus 2 e to the j 2 omega plus x of minus 1 e to the j omega plus uh, x of 0, e to the 0 is 1, so I won't write it, x of 1 e to the j omega minus now and because because where we are plus n is minus minus n is one so it's going to be that and then x of two the last non-zero value e to the negative j two omega and at this point all i have to do is take those values and put them in here so this would be six e to the j 3 omega plus 5 e to the j 2 omega plus 8 e to the j omega plus 2 plus 7 e to the minus j omega plus 2 e to the minus j 2 omega. So that is our profile which basically if I want to plot it uh, you can you can plot it just plug omega in there and you'll see it. And as you can notice, it will repeat itself every 2 pi. So um, x of e to the j omega. So if you wanted to, you can literally plot this and see what the signal looks like over a frequency. That brings us to the end of um, introduction of um, uh, discrete time. Again, the behavior of the discrete time Fourier series is very similar to the continuous uh, Fourier stra I'm sorry, it's a series transform. Fourier transform is not Fourier series, it's a Fourier transform. If you have a periodic signal, you still can take a you still can use the Fourier transform to take um, to take them to the frequency domain. Typically, it's easier to use Fourier series, but if I'm using a computer system or whatever, I typically just use the Fourier transform once I have the algorithm written, once I have the access to the functionality. It really doesn't matter what kind of signal you give it, you're gonna get the free frequency spectrum and then you can go back. The other thing to note is maybe a comparison with the continuous time is that when I take a Fourier transform in a discrete time, my Fourier transform is always periodic with the period being with the period being 2 pi for x of e to the j omega. So that's that's the only difference we have uh, with the continuous time. But the only major difference we have with the continuous time. That brings us to the end of this presentation.